I've got great news. There's now a standalone Theta Stitcher. So thanks to everyone who participated in our petition back in March. So huge thanks to you and to Rico. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the advantages of using the Theta Stitcher and I'm gonna show you how to use it. Let's get started. So first, what are the advantages of using the Theta Stitcher? There are three advantages. Number one is a higher resolution. If you're shooting in JPEG, you have a lower resolution compared to shooting in RAW. Second, much better stitching. You can see in this example, you have the exact same shot, but in JPEG, there are some stitching errors. Now in RAW, when I'm using the Theta Stitcher, those stitching errors disappear. Third, better bit depth and color accuracy. So in this example, you can see that the raw version has more accurate colors and the clouds look more three-dimensional. And you also get super high dynamic range if you use the dual fisheye plugin. Now the disadvantage of using raw or the dual fisheye plugin is that you have to stitch the photos. Until now, the way you stitch Theta Z1 photos is by using the Theta Stitcher plugin for Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, I love Adobe Lightroom, but it does have a monthly subscription and not everyone can afford that. But now we have a standalone Theta Stitcher. You don't need to use Adobe Lightroom. You can use any software you want, including my favorite software for editing 360 photos, Affinity Photo. Let me show you how to use the Theta Stitcher. Step one is to shoot in RAW or use the Dual Fisheye plugin. Now, if you don't have the Dual Fisheye plugin yet, it's available for free. Just go to the Theta plugin store and install it in your Theta Z1. Now, when you install it, there is a small chance that you will encounter an error and your, your Theta Z1 might look like it's stuck. If that happens, here are two solutions. Number one is to plug your Theta Z1 into a Windows PC. If you do that, then somehow it resets the Theta Z1 and you're able to use it again. Now, the second solution is to use a reset. So the way you do this is by holding down the power button and the wireless button at the same time. Long press both of them and the Theta Z1 will reset itself. Step two, edit your DNG file in your preferred image editor, such as Affinity Photo. Here's a simple way to do that. This one was shot in HDR DNG mode from Dual Fisheye. So I'm gonna right click and click on open with Affinity Photo. So uh, because this is a DNG file, the first thing that happens is to convert it from uh, DNG to a format that you can use to edit. And you can see that's really dark and that's totally normal if you're shooting with HDR DNG mode. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is uh, bring down the highlights. I almost always use minus 100% highlights. Next, I do not use shadows. No, I don't do that because it looks kind of weird. Um, instead, I, I prefer to work with exposure. So I bring that up. Uh, now, uh, Affinity Photo maxes out at 5. And if this is still too dark for you, you can adjust it later on. And the other thing you can do is an easy edit is clarity. Um, don't go overboard, you know, then it will look too grungy. Just set it to a, a point where it's just a little bit sharper. After that, you click on develop. In this next screen, we can fine tune the exposure. So one thing I like to do is add curves. So I click on adjustments and add the uh, curves here. And you can see that very similar to Photoshop. Uh, from here, you can add control points here and you know adjust this manually as you wish. Now, the easier way, if, if, if you're not familiar with curves, is to click on picker and then you just pick on whatever you want to brighten or darken. So let's say these shadows, you want it to, let's say you wanted to make it darker you left drag down, then become darker and it automatically adjusts the uh, curve to 
uh, make that darker or brighter as you wish. Now, if you want to make this brighter or darker, same thing. Now, if you made a mistake, uh, you could just select that point and then click delete and it's gone. Uh, in Affinity Photo, instead of going File, Save As, you go File, Export, and then you have to export it either as TIFF or JPEG in order to stitch it and take the stitcher. Let's use TIFF. I'm going to click on Export. Now, normally I would recommend saving it in the same folder as the original uh, DNG file. Um, but here I'm going to save it in a different folder just to show you what will happen. Here's that f uh, photo that we just edited. I'm going to select it, drag it um, into this app. And it's good. And because uh, the H the DNG file wasn't in that folder. It's asking, well, where is the DNG file? So we uh, click on this, and I'm going to look for it. In this case, it's over here. Um, okay, it was this one. So once you select the original DNG file, then it will continue to stitch the TIFF file. And normally, it will automatically straighten your photo. But let's say it's not totally straight. Like here, we can... Um, customize the, the straightening here. We click on manual settings. In this case, let's uh, decrease the pitch a little bit. You can also use yaw to reposition the middle of the photo. So whatever's in the middle of this photo will be the first thing that your viewer will see. So let's say the first thing that we want them to see is this entrance here to Disney Hall. So another parameter you could just change is uh, Turn camera, camera visibility on or off. Stitching will be smoother if you turn it off. And then you'll have to remove the tripod manually um, using post-processing techniques. And then when we're done, we just click on OK. It's going to prompt us to save the file. Now, you may be wondering, what if you have several files? Now, the good thing is that the standalone stitcher also supports batch stitching. Just drag all the unstitched files into the app at the same time. From there, the app will give you the option to use the same stitching for all the photos or to stitch the photos one at a time. Now, I know you're really excited to try out your new stitching superpowers, but those powers do have a limitation. To find out what I mean, let's do an experiment. So I have here the Theta Z1 and here's a target. It's a 360 camera. We're going to use it as a target and then behind that is a shed. So first let's take a photo with one lens facing the camera and the shed. With only one lens facing the camera and the shed, we see a complete picture for both the camera and the shed. Now let's try it with the stitch line aimed at the camera and the shed. The shed appears complete, but the camera in front looks like it's missing the middle part. Now we can adjust the settings so that the camera will be stitched correctly. But when the settings are adjusted to stitch the camera correctly, the shed is now too wide and the tree above it has ghosting. These are examples of parallax stitching errors. The two lenses of the Theta are each viewing slightly different perspectives of the orange Madventure camera and the shed behind it. Therefore, when we try to stitch the photos from the two lenses, we get errors such as ghosting or blind spots. So as you can see, the Theta Stitcher has a limit. It can only stitch at one distance, near or far. This is not just a limitation of the Theta Stitcher. This is true for most stitching software as well. But are there exceptions? What if we really wanted to get that stitch? Well, here's that same shot stitched in PT GUI. How'd you do that? Well, here's how. So let me show you how I stitched that shot. So here I'm going to load the shot. Here it is. After loading the photo in PT GUI, I apply one of my templates. Then we take a look at the photo by going to Tools Panoramic Editor. Here it is. It looks like it's the same problem as the Theta Stitcher, with a part of the camera missing. So let's try to fix that. I'm going to minimize this and go to the project assistant. From here, I'm going to click on mask, the mask tab. Now, masking means that you're forcing a part of the photo to be included or excluded in a stitch. 
So here you can see red, which means exclude, or green, which means include. And here I'm going to use the green paint to include the camera. In other words, I'm telling PTGUI, please include the entire camera. Don't just like chop it up. So I'm going to mark this green. And um, I can mark the window as well so that to, to ensure that it's not chopped up. And we'll mark even the monopod. Okay. So, all right. Let's see what happens after we've mark masked it and there we go now we have the complete camera a complete window and even the complete monopod or selfie stick now this masking technique is just the tip of the iceberg and there are other advanced techniques that will let you stitch even the insta 361 r in a tight space like a car interior if you want to learn how to do that, then check out the HQ method. I'll see you in 360.